What up, Eagle Talk fans? What's up, guys? This is going to be interesting. <laughs> Listen, today. this episode right here ain't no- nothing but the blood of Jesus <laughs> <laughs> that we are on here talking about entrepreneurship couples and money yep um love and money we're gonna get through it <laughs> we gonna get through it so y'all on today's podcast um uh, we are going to touch a topic that um we ain't want to touch for a long time <laughs> um that's because it really can be a tender subject in not just entrepreneurial couples but with most couples which is the turn the the whole thing idea of money and money management Mm -hmm. and um if you look at the cause of majority of divorces families dissolve a lot of them is over dispute with financial issues yeah um so we're gonna talk about some (laughs) lessons we have learned Uh but before like 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 let's let's talk to mr um bmf blowing money fast (laughs) over here <laughs> um, <laughs> yes, is, how can I help you? <laughs> what is something now that you look back? Uh, maybe something that you like. Uh, I, I did blow that money on that, and maybe I should not have done it. It wasn't the best. Best. Uh, I mean, so I have one particular item that I regret. Okay, okay? that you regret. But I want to say I want to go back before I bought that. Okay. okay? So probably when I, I think when I was 23. Mm, you're going back to 23. Well, I had, I got the house out the way, right? Okay. But I, real estate was, took off. I, I think I quit my job and I, I just decided to win. And as the money came, the things came. Mm-hmm. The, remember my white BMW 5 Series? I remember your white BMW. Remember my uh black BMW X5? I remember your black BMW at the same time you had the white one. What about the uh black mint coat? I remember the black mint coat. What about the gray mint coat? I remember the gray mint coat. What about the brown mint coat? I also remember the brown mint coat. So those are five things I had at once, okay? That, like, that he uh, probably bought within <laughs> like a three-month period. Yeah, like <laughs> just an idiot, right? But here's the thing. When, when you when money is new to you and you're not educated on money, you buy dumb things. Now, I got better as time went on, but when I did get a certain level of success, for some reason, I thought it was good to buy... Uh, 1988 IROC Z <laughs> drop top out in Vegas. Uh, it was a college kid that needed to sell it. And he, I bought it, shipped it to a friend's house, and he shipped it to me. You didn't know about it till it hit the front door. So it came, yeah. That was a problem. Um, and by the way, we really didn't have money when he did this. No, nah, <laughs> yeah, no. Nah. Yeah. But he was still, he was still. Well, um, I was figuring out. I mean, I was making money, but I was spending money. Yeah. But the bottom line is that car probably cost me about 20 grand. To restore, about- I'm saying to restore. Like I'm talking seats, engine, rims, everything you can do to a car. I'm, I'm gonna put some pictures up so y'all know I ain't, I ain't bluffing. Uh, and when you sold it, about how much you made? Oh, I took a haircut. <laughs> uh, I I probably sold it for about seventy five hundred dollars. <laughs> yeah, I was we were here in Frisco and it was just in the garage, and Corey kept bumping it, taking out the garbage. You know, and with the garbage and, and it also kept dripping. The oil oh, yeah, pan yeah, kept it was dripping. oil all over. The, uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. So that's something that I definitely regret. Um, yeah, I'll just leave it there. Yeah, yeah. So I don't even have to add to your story <laughs> <laughs> because for sure, yeah. um, money has been an issue in our relationship. And here's the thing, y'all. I thought that it was an issue when we weren't making because it is. It's an issue when you ain't making money. Oh yeah, for sure. But it's I, f- I almost feel like it's more dangerous when you are making money because when it is coming in and coming in quickly, mm-hmm. we can mask some of our poor money management skills mm-hmm. because you got something else coming in, right? Yeah. Well, what I had to do, not to cut you off, was I had to get educated about money. Yes. Once yes. I got educated about money and found out how it works, what to do with it. Uh, and how to keep it moving to to multiply, then you know things got different. Things got different, and yeah. now we understand like we want we actually want more money than we want to look like money. Yeah. <laughs> um, so that that's something. But we're just gonna get into it today, and we're just gonna like open up um, kind of our playbook as we are learning, mm-hmm. and just kind of go into the topic of love and money. So. Corey has shared with you um, kind of his baggage around money. His mm-hmm. baggage was spending fast, um, you know, like it burned a hole in his hand, things like yeah. that. Yeah. My baggage was different because I had a lot of money issues and I've shared on the podcast before um, how um, I had such a lack mindset 
especially around money Mm -hmm. that um that it was hard for me you know especially when I got into real estate it's like yes I want to be successful but I was almost afraid of success because I believed that money was the root of all evil and money changed people and money did this and money did that I was putting so much weight on money without really understanding like no it's money is a tool yeah right um and It's not that money is the root of all evil. It's the love of money. And Mm -hmm. I can aspire to be successful, but um, I can't elevate wealth. I can't elevate resources above who God is in my life. But I really had to unpack my junk. Like, literally, I had to unpack my junk with the way I thought about money. And um, and it has been a game changer since then. So you came in with a different type of baggage. Like you came in so abundant that you would spend it all. Yeah. And I came in so lack that I would clinch and even making good financial moves. Um, I was scared to do it mm-hmm. because I just wanted to hold on to everything. I think too, though, in, in both of our defense, I was getting money in lumps, yeah. right? I, I sell a house and make 40 grand. I would say that all the time. I was like, I, it, it dawned on me. I don't even know if we were married yet. I was like, you know what? My man's is living check to check. It's just he living forty thousand dollar check <laughs> to sixty thousand yeah. dollar check, as opposed to regular people were living. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so no, you were sure. able to sustain it for a little bit longer yeah. than the average person until market crash and we just couldn't. No more. Yeah, and it got old. It, it got old quick. You know, st- st- having and not having. You yeah. know, you would rather just have. Uh, and and I learned it again. Um, sometimes you don't know what you don't know. Yeah. You know, and I think. Just talking about your situation, yours where you were getting money every two weeks. Yeah. You know, so it was kind of like you knew exactly what was coming, when it was coming. You would allocate for your bills and then that's what you hoarded. Yeah. Uh, So it was just two different perspectives. But again, you know, knowledge is power. Knowledge is power. So so as we are evolving in this love and money and 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 growing, because we are not about to sit here and act like we have it all together, Mm -hmm. um, but we are growing and we have had some hard conversations. We've had to unpack the way we were we were raised, you know, our thought processes. We've read books uh, about it. Um, Here are a couple things that are helping us along the way. And the first thing is that communication is key. Yeah. Um, we have had meetings where we've laid it all out on the table, right? Wasn't pretty. Uh, one, one pretty. Uh, but literally, and, and, and by the way, might want to do this before you get married. I mean, we kind of start doing it after 12, 13, 14 years of marriage. Right. But um, just really like removing the shame and saying, okay, this is where I am. This is my debt. This is what I have in the bank. This is what my reoccurring bills are. Um, These are my commitments. Just actually communicating with each other. Mm -hmm. And I have to say from a wife perspective, um, you got to be mature enough to have that conversation. Oh, yeah, for sure. Right. And I don't know. I guess it depends on who's the spender, who's the saver. Like we, you have to have that conversation and and really work to not come from a judgment free zone or to come from a judgment free zone because it's such a vulnerable conversation to have. It, it is. Um, and I'm going to tell you how we approached it. And, and this is for anybody. And this is I'm not trying to shade anybody or whatever the case may be. That conversation is business. Yeah. It's not personal. Yeah. Right. And, yeah. and I think when we have those conversations, we, we come with a with common goal and say, hey, this is my business. This is your business. This is each other's junk. Right. Right. And wh- whatever it look like at the end of the day, this is our the Lewis business. Is yeah. that fair? Yeah. Um, and I don't think we either one of us walk away, you know, feeling some kind of way. We just know that the work needs to be done in a certain area after we have this business meeting. Yeah. And, and, and I just want to back it up, though, and say. The initial conversation we is not, and and I don't even know that we judge each other afterwards. But now we get to hold each other accountable, accountable. right? Yeah, yeah. Right. So, and and accountability isn't a bad word, but it's like, okay, this is where we at. Okay, this is where we need to go. And now, when we come back, we want to see growth in these areas, yeah, right? That's, okay, that's so, business. So communication. Yeah. Then number two, once you put it all out on the table. Now you're in a place where you can start to establish a budget. That's the hard part. <clears throat> um, for no, no, no. I'm, I'm I'm saying for for you. That's that's you. That's natural for you. For me, um, not that I can't do a budget because now I guess I I have a budget. But I was at one point I was buying so much 
to where we got to the end of the year and it was like, well, I didn't need these last seven houses. Which is why you need a budget. <laughs> <laughs> Which is what, because that was good. Like, y'all, for the but longest. But that's true, though, right? But for the longest, Corey would say to me, well, Rosemary, I'm not like you. I get paid the same, you know, you get paid the same thing every week. It's easier for you to set a budget. But now I'm in real estate, right? Yeah. And I'm, we're in the same situation, right? Like, my commissions look different month to month Mm -hmm. so now i'm looking at you like so what are you saying now and but and again i'm not condemning you no 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 no. i think the point that i'm making is is especially the way my business goes if if i'm buying something and i'm holding it for a short period i can have a a month three months straight where i got 20 grand a month in hard money payments right Twenty five thousand dollars a month in hard money payments but what i should have done was evaluated it a, before, a, before evaluate right. have the budget and exactly. evaluate before and say right this month i'm only gonna spend 12 and a half to fifteen thousand dollars and that's the point that i'm making yes yes so so whatever that looks like like once you have your numbers out on the table we establish a budget and then what ends up happening is once you establish a budget now you can start to look to see okay where are some of my discretion where are some of our discretionary spending mm-hmm. that we can eliminate or you know i know one thing for us is we have started to say okay at least like every day night don't have to be at the del frisco right we can we can spend some day nights you know going to a local restaurant or cooking at home or doing something like that because we're being more budget conscious which i think is harder to do when you have money coming in um but we're doing a better job of being more budget conscious and setting parameters around our spending yeah i recently done that um with jeremy bringing Mm -hmm. him back jeremy is our um Meal meal prep guy so I get either six to ten meals a week from him, and that keeps me because I'm when I'm hungry. Y'all, Corey, like literally, uh, yeah, I mean, like I will talk to Corey at like two o'clock, and I'll be like, "Hey, what you doing? Oh, I'm about to grab something to eat real quick." And then I'm like, "Oh, I made the spaghetti, and I portioned it out, and I put it in a plate and left it on the table." <laughs> um, you didn't take spaghetti with you? Nah, I'm just hungry. I'm gonna eat something real quick. Okay, where you at? Hold on one second. Let me get two pounds of crab. Uh, I want the fried shrimp and uh, a dirty martini. I'm like, dude, that's a hundred dollars for lunch. I don't care what you're doing. It's yeah, it, it's more like Hutchins, right? But occasionally <laughs> it, it will be, you know, that great lunch. But no, I brought Jeremy back um, to the picture, and actually, he's probably shaved down about four or five meals outside of the house yeah so yeah a week so, so, so that's great so creating a budget okay yeah. then here's the next one um keeping your business and personal finances separate yeah that was hard for me for a long time yeah i'm um, like where are you coming from yeah i finally figured that out um but i think that's really important because when it comes to tax time man it is a cluster it's a nightmare yeah that's yeah, let me just leave that there. Just keep them separate. Have your business card. Have your personal card. If you can, put 100 to $200 in your pocket a week and just roll like that. Yeah, one thing that I do is, um, you know, I have um, a personal or business account. And I make sure, like, my personal, my business account is connected to where I'm doing my accounting so I can see it. I'm snapping a picture of the receipt. Um, I'm writing on the receipt what it's for. And one thing that I do a little hack for me is anything personal. Um, I know it's separate because I have a credit card that I use for all of my personal expenses Mm -hmm. that I pay off or I pay to 10% every month. So I'm getting the benefits from it. And that way I know, okay, this was for Per, you know for personal yeah. things and, and i don't and here's the thing if you're also in business it's not a bad idea to speak with your cpa or a tax strategist mm-hmm. to figure out what are some things because for instance Corey and i when we go on dates we're having business conversations mm-hmm. so our date night meals are actually business conversation meals so that's mm-hmm. something that um, you know, if the the context of our conversation, it could be something that we could create a business expense oh, for. for. Sure. Yeah. Um, so figure out, talk to CBA, figure things out, but keep it separate because it's going to alleviate so many headaches where you're not like and not transferring money back and forth. Like it could be crazy. So keep it separate. Yep. Okay. And speaking of that, number four, we're going to encourage you to set clear financial goals i'm gonna let you go on that um 
very important. I think that you need to, I think in the beginning of the year, um, you know, everybody is hyped up on the New Year's resolutions and the whole New Year, New Me and all of that. That's fine. But the beginning of the year, just set them super high. Not so much unrealistic, but set them really high. And then every 30 days, um, I think you should revisit them and kind of tweak them. And then every quarter, start to see if they're making sense as the year is going. Yeah. Um, that's what I did last year. I got about 65% of the way there. And then the, the rates peaked. Uh, they spiked up in July. So I had to slow down and, and pull back. So the, the pivot was um, to slow down on the rentals, but I picked up on the wholesaling side. So that kind of picked up from where I was lacking on one end. So again, you know, it, it'll never work perfectly, but just start out the gate with them just extraordinary huh yeah if you all haven't checked out episode 86 we just really talk about all things goal setting um and one thing as i think about it as it relates to relationships like being clear with each other like this is how much money we need like what do we need to bring in so Mm -hmm. i got a broke number we got a survival number um we have a stretch number so what has to come in and if y'all were here for the last episode we did last week episode i think it was number 96 we just talked about um prioritizing marriage and business but there have some times when it's kind of like hey babe um i know that we were supposed to go do x y and z but we may have to reschedule that to you know still have a mm-hmm. place for it mm-hmm. because i need to do this activity to hit my number yeah. and if you know my number and we're clear on what goals we need to achieve then it's not that same level of pushback right? yeah yeah for sure so and um, then having now, that uh, sorry to cut you off but yeah, as, I, as i think about it too when i say sometimes you have to switch it in the be in the in the middle like one of my goals this year was to purchase two uh, apart multifamily. I don't want to say apartment buildings, a multifamily, and that looks different with the RV park. Yeah, right. It, it might not be two thirty-two unit buildings, but the RV park we're developing has one hundred technically doors or slabs, so it looks different, but it's the exact same thing. Yeah, and letting your letting your your spouse know like what's going on. Like, wait, I thought we was doing X. Now yeah. we're doing Y. Like, help me help me understand sure. if if you have capacity. So let me back up too and say. Sometimes there are some things in life when it's kind of like, dude, I don't need to know all the details. Like, just yeah. give me give me the Cliff Notes version and I'm good. Mm-hmm. Um, but making sure that we're on the same page, which is back to that communication. Yeah, for sure. Okay. Now, here's the next one. We um, talked about it in an earlier point, but seeking some professional help in building your financial life together. That's, that's another thing I do twice a year. Um, go back to the episode with. Our financial advisor, Ed Dixon. Yes, episode 75. 75. I sit down. Typically, I sit down with him in January and I sit down with him again in June and talk strategy, talk about what's working, what's not working and what his wealthy clients are doing. Um, I think that that that's ultra important instead of you listening to you all of the time. Yeah, listen to you all the time. And then, you know, get with your CPA, get with your tax strategies. If you are, um, you know, we have had years where our income has doubled and it's not the time to have a conversation with the CPA at the end of the year. It's like, as you Mm. see your numbers increasing, okay, what are some things that I need to be, these are things that we didn't know, by the way. Mm -hmm. I'm talking, I'm saying it like we did it and we knew it. We did not know it. But what are some things that I need to be doing maybe before year end or before quarter end um, because I see my income changing or even if you see a decrease and like what are some different things that you can be doing so making sure that you're seeking advice and then um, even seeking advice of what should we be doing with the money that we're bringing in right mm-hmm. should we be investing it should we put it in stock should we put it in real estate um, so just figuring out how to make things work for you so that everything like one especially entrepreneurs we have to be very careful that um, we're not only investing our time and our efforts in things that require our hands at work, right? Preach. Uh, yeah, but, and I'm just saying, like, that's one thing we're building. We have shifted our mindset recently to saying, okay, if something happens to me or Corey or whatever, we need products, we need residual income, we need things that are out here working for us. And sometimes it takes masterminding with other individuals to figure out how to make the money you're making work for you. I can talk about that for too long. So let's go to the next one. (laughs) (laughs) Well, okay. The last one is planning for contingency. Yeah. So um, let me go back to what you were just talking about. The contingency plan is cash flow. You definitely need to, what you just saying, you need to be able to get paid for doing nothing. Yeah. Um, And I realized that about three years ago where I was just buying and selling everything, which just totally did not make sense. Well, I should have been holding for cash flow. 
uh, as of today's date, I'm at 48 doors, which is great. Um, the goal right now is about 150. Uh, that's probably gonna go to 250 because the RV park is 100 in itself. But at the end of the day, I'm not doing anything. Yeah. Paying the mortgage if I owe something on it um, when the money comes in. But for the most part, the tenant is paying 100% of everything, uh, PITI, principal interest, taxes, and insurance. And that's going to be real important for uh, just retirement. The the B side of that is the equity capture over time. And I preach on this again because I was buying and selling everything. I think you need to hold. Yeah. I think, you know, a minimum of, of a 10-year hold, um, hopefully for 100% appreciation. And if you decide to cash out then, then that's, you know, that's when you, you take your millions and you walk away. Okay, and, and I'm also going to give a different spin to that. I think that you do, definitely we need cash flow, but we also need cash reserve for, sure. for contingencies because, you know, you think about the pandemic, like there are so many businesses that went out in the pandemic because quite honestly, they didn't have, they could not afford to keep the doors open for mm-hmm. three months, yeah. you know, four months until depending on where you were until things opened up. So if there's anything that we are learning is that, okay, first of all, minimum, you need to have six to 12 months from your living expenses, right? Mm -hmm. So that Mm -hmm. you don't have to, if not another dollar comes in, how are you going to sustain your living environment? And then you also need to have, you know, cash reserve for your business expenses too, um, because Especially like when you we're in a real estate business, so you can have a deal that's supposed to pay you a hundred thousand dollars fall apart two days before closing. And if yeah. you only had your eggs in that basket, then you will be screwed and depressed. Yeah, I'm thinking, and this is a true story. I bought during the pandemic uh a building in which is how falls a commercial building. It was a it was a ceramic shop. It's actually nice, it's a brick corner lot. Um and when I got it from the lady, she lost it due to taxes and her husband died of COVID. And so this is 2020, 2022 was when I got it. Uh, I picked it up for like 35 grand. And when I called her because I needed her to sign a redemption waiver stating that she wasn't coming back to redeem it. She gave me the whole story on how they had it for years, years and years. Never saved any cash reserve. Yeah. Lost he it. winds up passing. She took out. She takes out a tax loan and wound up just losing it. Yeah. Because life lives, you yep. know, and you just and especially as I just say in general, I think some people have a false sense of security if they have a job yeah. that um, that the bottom won't fall out. But definitely having some sort of cash reserve and then think about in relationship. I think a lot of times most of our issues come up when there is a lack of money and just the discipline of saving 10 percent, 20 percent. Every time you get paid, paying yourself before you go to pay any of your bills, pay Prada, Gucci, whatever, mm-hmm. um, to actually pay yourself back so that you have money that's sitting in there. Yeah, no, that's a great point. Yeah. All right, y'all. So, whoo, we made it. <laughs> <laughs> it bad. We made it on this money conversation. Now, a few resources that I just want to share with you. Um, is definitely check out episode 75. Our financial planner was on there. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think it's very um, wise to have somebody there. And then a couple books to just help me with my mindset around money are You Are a Badass and Making Money Mm -hmm. and The Science of Getting Rich. Um, So those were two very mindset kind of related things that um, just helped me with my thinking about it. And I want to say the last thing is like money is a touchy subject. And quite honestly, many of us we're not taught financial literacy. And then you get into a relationship with somebody who also wasn't taught financial literacy, but we had different ways of handling money model and it can just blow up. So um, when you approach these conversations, first of all, pray, mm-hmm. approach them with grace and dignity. And um, yeah, and just remember that you and your spouse have the common goal of being successful together. And we may have different ways to go around to doing that. But um, don't let the pain of the conversation and the work outweigh the purpose of why you're together. Yeah, um, I can end on great book recommendations. If I had to give one, I'm going to go to the classic uh, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Yeah. uh, By Robert Kiyosaki with with just two different perspectives of of a worker and an entrepreneur. Um, I know many people have read it, but I think you should revisit it because it's it's a lot of I think when you hear about it, sometimes you hear about it earlier in life. Yeah. But I think you need it about our age. Yeah. Um, and I, they were talking about on, on, on your leisure, you know, about revisiting that book a couple of weeks ago. And I think that's important. So uh, those are three really good books that we can recommend. And hopefully this episode was was great for you guys. Yep. All right, y'all. See you later, Eagles. See y'all. Bye, y'all.